Have you ever wondered how much vehicle dollar destruction Hollywood unleashes in big budget action films? We're talking about real mega dollar rides utterly demolished in the name of cinematic glory. In this video, we feature 10 jaw-dropping crash-tastic moments when Hollywood destroyed insanely expensive cars. The criteria to make it on this list is that actual production cars would have had to have been destroyed and not just fakes or shells dressed to look like the real thing. So let's suit up, strap in, and get on with it. In the 1997 action thriller Con Air, Nicolas Cage plays a parole convict who finds himself on a hijacked prison transfer plane, fittingly named The Jailbird. While the film mainly deals with aircraft and the conflicts between prisoners and guards, a sweet 1967 Chevrolet Corvette convertible grabs some screen time as well, a timeless symbol of American power and style. The 1967 Corvette was the last year of the second generation of the model, with some considering it the best styled of the early versions. Available with engine options including 327, 396, or 427 cubic inches, this car was sporty and quick. Throughout the film, the Corvette appears in several scenes driving along the open road and then finding cover in an airstrip outbuilding. Its most memorable moment, though, is when the car gets hooked by a rope attached to the departing jailbird and goes on the ride of its life where it ultimately gets dragged through a tower structure and lands upside down and flattened in the dirt. The destruction of the Corvette adds to the film's thrilling action. However, considering the car's value, it might be a surprising directorial choice as a pristine 327 powered 1967 Corvette can fetch around $100,000 these days. While reports don't confirm the exact number of Corvettes used in filming, it's safe to assume at least one valuable car was sacrificed for the scene. The Road Warrior is the second film in the Mad Max franchise where the setting depicts the realm of a post-apocalyptic dystopia where fuel is precious and barbarism is the rule of the day. Max Rakotansky, played by Mel Gibson, brings along his heavily modified and supercharged Pursuit Special to do battle with a roving pack of marauders. The Pursuit Special is a modified 1973 Ford Falcon XB GT Coupe that is actually the same car that was used in the first Mad Max movie. In the film, we're treated to epic scenes of vehicular mayhem and destruction with the cobbled together marauder vehicles meeting their demise most brutally and spectacularly. Mercifully, the Pursuit Special as the hero car was never destroyed during its filmwork duties and resides in a museum in Florida these days. However, a stunt car was created from another 1973 Falcon XP GT that was destroyed and blown up in this scene. And for that we can all shed a tear because these days, the Falcon XP GT is a rare and desirable vintage Aussie muscle car that is now worth about $160,000. The 2005 remake of The Longest Yard starring Adam Sandler as disgraced NFL quarterback Paul Crew takes an unexpected turn with the inclusion of a 2005 Bentley Continental GT, the prized possession of Crew's girlfriend. The Bentley Continental GT debuted in 2003 with a 512 horsepower V12 engine that could rocket it from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Not bad for this whisper quiet, exquisitely styled Poshmobile. In the movie, Sandler's character leaves a party after a few too many barley pops and gets pulled over by the law. He doesn't stay pulled over for long and soon attempts to flee by first backing into a police car and then going on a high speed pursuit where he weaves through traffic, grabs some air, and even drives through a pedestrian area before a final crash where the Bentley is destroyed in an intersection by a horde of police cars that ram the abused Continental from every direction. While only one Bentley appears on screen, the destruction was real. Considering a 2005 Bentley Continental GT started at $160,000 when new, the filmmakers undeniably committed to the scene's impact by destroying it. The demise of this expensive car was a shocking and memorable part of the film, depicting Crew's literal crash into the rock bottom point of his life and the beginning of his rise to redemption. 
The Dark Knight isn't just a battle between Batman and the Joker. It's a showcase of contrasting vehicles. The heavily armored Batmobile embodies stoic determination, while Bruce Wayne's daily driver, the 2008 Lamborghini Murcielago LP640, reflects a different side. Murcielago, meaning bat in Spanish, is a fitting choice. Its sleek, aggressive design features a V12 640 horsepower engine capable of reaching speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour. This perfectly embodies Bruce Wayne's billionaire playboy persona while subtly hinting at his nocturnal activities. Bruce Wayne, driving the Murcielago, attempts to thwart an assassination of his accountant by one of the Joker's henchmen, who is poised in a heavy-duty pickup truck to ram a police car carrying his target. When the hitman moves on the SUV carrying his victim, Wayne inserts the Lamborghini between the truck and the SUV and absorbs the impact of the crash, thus destroying the Murcielago. To the dismay of exotic car enthusiasts everywhere, three Lamborghinis were used to film the scene on Chicago's Lake Street, with one meeting its crudgy demise in the intense stunt sequence. Back then, a new Murcielago cost a staggering $345,000 leaving some to shed a tear that such a road-eating rocket would be destroyed for the film. The plot of this classic film doesn't get any simpler. Deliver a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT with a 440 Magnum engine from Denver to San Francisco in under 15 hours. The Challenger RTs used for the film were speedy powerhouses. Packing a standard 440 cubic inch V8 engine, they symbolized raw American muscle and freedom on the open road. In the film, the Challenger becomes an extension of its driver's rebellion with epic chases, mind-blowing jumps, and high-speed highway runs with the limit-defying Challenger making it seem like child's play. The Challenger takes it like a champ and keeps on keeping on. In reality, the limits of the Challengers were exceeded, suffering serious damage during filming even though they weren't visibly wrecked on screen in a spectacular crash. That fiery wreck at the end? They used a junk Chevrolet Camaro for that. As Chrysler retained ownership of the cars and only loaned them to the production, they decided to crush all five of the Challengers after the cameras stopped rolling. The destruction of those five Alpine White Challengers represented about $500,000 worth of rare Primo muscle car metal had they been spared from the crusher and restored, making the destroyed challengers a vanished fortune. Leonardo DiCaprio plays Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street, a 2013 Martin Scorsese-directed film that epitomizes the outrageous corruption and greed of the late 1980s. His 1989 Lamborghini Countach 25th Anniversary Edition is a perfect match for his flamboyant lifestyle. The 25th anniversary Countach was one of the last versions of the Countach model line launched in 1974. The mid-engine exotic with its 5.2 liter 455 horsepower V12 engine was one of the quickest and fastest of the Countach line, capable of the 0 to 60 sprint in 4.5 seconds and a top speed of 185 miles per hour. While under the influence of something, DiCaprio's character goes on a wild ride in the Countach, seemingly arriving at his destination with the car, none the worse for wear. But that was only how he remembered it, when in another scene, we are treated to what actually happened, with the Countach being destroyed by appearing to hit nearly everything in its path during its inebriated night ride. The film used two Countach 25th anniversary cars, one was for the non-destructive driving scenes, while the other was used for the punishment scene. The cars originally stickered for $145,000 when new in 1989, and are worth about $400,000 these days at auction. Interestingly, the uncrashed version of the Countach sold at auction in December of 2023 for $1.65 million, while the crashed version failed to sell after an unaccepted bid of $1.35 million at an auction in November of 2023. Iron Man 2 wasn't just about Tony Stark blasting bad guys in his tricked out suit. Amid the heart pounding action and technological marvels, one standout feature is the 2010 Rolls Royce Phantom, a symbol of luxury and refinement. 
The 2010 Phantom epitomizes elegance with its timeless design and opulent interior. The Phantom was no slouch in the performance department either, with its 6.7 liter 453 horsepower V12 engine able to hustle its occupants to a stylish soiree or out of a sticky situation with the utmost haste with 0 to 60 miles per hour occurring in just 5.7 seconds. In the film, Happ and Pepper speed to Tony's aid in the rolls as he's being pursued by Vanco while racing in the Monaco Historic Grand Prix. The excitement and danger is amped up as Vanco wields electrified whips powered by an ARC mini reactor to take out Tony and anything that comes his way. The Rolls finds its way onto the race course to do battle with Vanco and is brutally punished by the whip's wrath. The Phantom certainly looked like it was damaged in the film because it was. Two nearly identical Phantoms were built for the production at a cost of around $438,000 each and both were trashed for the film. That's a lot of dollars to be transformed to junk, but the end result is undeniable. A truly unforgettable scene where a high dollar luxury car is reduced to trash for our film viewing fulfillment. The 2016 film Doctor Strange features Benedict Cumberbatch as the title character, a brilliant but arrogant surgeon who after a career ending accident seeks healing in the mystical arts. His lifestyle is high-end, and it's reflected in his car, a 2016 Lamborghini Huracan LP610 IV. This Italian masterpiece packs a 5.2-liter V10 engine, ready to rocket it from 0 to 60 in a heart-stopping 3.2 seconds. All that speed potential is unleashed in a scene in the film where the good doctor hurries to an award dinner, weaving in and out of traffic on a rain-slicked, twisty highway where the unthinkable happens a miscalculation, sending the car careening off the road over a cliff and bouncing down the cliff face where it finally lands as a twisted heap in a shallow body of water. Reportedly, nine Lamborghinis met their demise during production, tallying a staggering cost of over $2.2 million. In 2024, a used Huracan LP610 IV can fetch a hefty sum, anywhere from two to $300,000. The 1971 movie Le Mans is hailed as one of the greatest racing films ever. It throws viewers into the heart of the grueling 24 hours of Le Mans race with a mix of real race footage and spectacular crashes. The film prominently features the Porsche 917K, a dominant force in the 1970 race. These lightweight beasts, powered by a 580 horsepower 12-cylinder engine, could scream down the Mulsanne Strait at over 230 miles per hour. One scene showcases the film's commitment to realism, where Steve McQueen's golf liveried Porsche duels with a Ferrari 512. The Ferrari loses control, launching over an embankment and meeting its fiery end. Distracted by the crash, McQueen's Porsche nearly collides with a slower car and spins out in a spectacular wreck. Incredibly, both crashes used radio-controlled Lola T70s disguised as the real cars to achieve such precision and realism. Sadly, a real Porsche 917K wasn't spared. A tire blowout at high speed sent the car crashing and severely injured its driver, David Piper. The crash destroyed the car, one of only 36 917Ks ever built, and was scrapped. Today, these legendary machines go for up to $18 million at auction. The Le Mans film reminds us that even in the pursuit of cinematic brilliance, there's a high price to pay. The loss of the car and the driver's injury serve as a somber footnote in both racing and filmmaking history. In preparation for the 2015 James Bond film Spectre, Aston Martin and the film's producers created a group of 10 identical and very special bespoke DB10s. These were only used for filming and for movie promotional purposes. The DB10 is a masterwork of automotive design beauty that perfectly suits the James Bond persona. In the film, Bond driving the DB10 is pursued by an assassin driving a Jaguar CX-75 through the streets of Rome and the Vatican. While roaring and drifting across the pavement, 
As the DB-10 flees the Jaguar, Bond attempts to ditch the baddie through a variety of means, including the automotive flambe method, steep step traverse, and lots of other wild high-speed stunts. Of course there's an ejector seat involved that Bond puts to good use as he vacates the DB-10, leaving it to meet its soggy ending at the bottom of the Tiber River. The cool thing about the chase sequence besides the DB-10 is that no CGI was used. All of the stunts and driving were 100% real. The not so cool thing is that reportedly the production trashed not one, but seven of the DB-10s at a cost of over $20 million. Fortunately, three of the DB-10s survived, with one of them selling for $3.5 million at auction in 2016. We hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel with notifications activated.